Uh, hello guys, I'm Dr. Godaj Jachin. As a part of Waiting e Shikshana program, I'm going to uh, deliver a uh, session two on application layer. And in the before going for the topics which I'm dealing for this session, uh, just uh, just a takeaway from the previous session. Uh, in the first session, I have delivered about various uh, you know features of application layer, uh, the fundamental architectures of computer networks. One is uh, peer-to-peer architecture and the most client server architecture. What are the drawbacks of client server architecture? What are the advantages of peer-to-peer -peer architecture and so on. Along with those, uh, I have also uh, give importance towards the features of transport layer, the features of application layer and so on. Okay. Uh, right now, we'll go with a few topics, one of the important protocol of your application layer in the session. Okay. We'll deal with that. Okay. Before going for that particular you know, uh, protocol, let me tell you very important factor of protocols that corresponding to a unique number. Okay. For example, I, uh, for IP protocol, the unique number with RFC is 791. For TCP, it is 793. For HTTP, it is 2616. What is this number? Who is going to give this number? Okay. RFC is a type of publication from the Internet Engineering Task Force and Internet Society. Okay. This RFC is a publication forum which comes under these two society. Okay. For example, I am a researcher and I wanted to come up with a new protocol with the existing features following with the existing protocol. What I have to do? Simply with the help of one or two publication or one or two experiment, I cannot able to publish that protocol and I cannot able to make the users to use that protocol. What is the procedure? I have to put up a complete documentation for RFC. Okay. The expertise members of that committee, they will ask a lot of comments. They'll put a lot of comments on that, rigorous comments on that. And once it is finalized, they will assign a unique number with RFC called as request for comment. Okay, so they are the original documents for all the protocols. Whatever the textbook we are following, they are the follow-ups of that particular RFC itself. Okay, so that is one more important point which I want to mention. And now, without wasting the time, let me go with the first important protocol of your application layer called as HTTP. Okay, as we all know that the first network developed in US Army and we can defense we can call it as DARPANET okay uh, after that the second important network even today widely uses TCP slash IP mechanism okay so when we call about TCP slash IP mechanism it's about two important layers of TCP slash IP but majority of the outside networking operation will be happened with the help of application layer that too with the help of one of the finest protocol called HTTP protocol Okay, in later 1990s and in early 1990s, internet has been tremendously used across globe for multi purposes. Okay, if you want to call a web page, okay, that web page will be a collection of objects. It can take any web page, it might be Google, general Google page, or if you want to search some uh, Facebook or whatever the web page you want, that web page will be the collection of objects. Okay, basically HTTP protocol has been implemented on two important program. One is called as client program. You can see here one is called as client program and the other one called as server program. Okay, so if you want to learn the greater details of HTTP protocol, we have to study the basic fundamentals of what is URL, what is web browser and what is web server. Okay, we'll see one by one how they works. Okay. URL is nothing but uniform resource locator. Okay. Uh, I think if you have heard of this name like HTTP colon double slash followed by www.youtube.com, www.facebook.com, they are nothing but URL. Okay. URL is nothing but uniform resource locator. Okay. And that URL can be divided into number of, you know, entities. The first part is called as scheme. Okay, what is scheme here? The protocol HTTP is called as uh, we can we can have the example here. With the help of this, I can explain the complete parts of URL. Okay, the HTTP is called as what the scheme. What is the host here? That is what the exact domain. That is www.example.com. This is what here host. 
followed by if I want, if I will be very specific to take the data. Okay, that specific path is called as path. Okay, and sometimes if I would have downloaded the object, if I want to view the object, it will be ended with some question mark. Okay, something like path question mark some query. That is called as query query string. Okay, this is the major four parts of a URL. One is the schema, the protocol which I want to use, followed by uh, colon double slash. That is called as host which host you are wanted to go with. A path, which path, I mean particular path, for example, in, uh, for example, in BT website, www dot, for example, okay, you want to check VTU dot AC dot in, within that I want to check, for example, PhD programs, okay, within that I want to check some, uh, something else, okay, in this, what is your domain, the path, this is your path, okay. This is your schema. This is your host. The actual website is called as the host. Okay. If you want to download an image or if you are, want to retrieve some uh, actual, uh, you know, uh, PDF files and all, that will be having a query question mark followed by the document address that is called as query string. Okay. I hope you got the logic of this. URL can be divided into four major parts. Sometimes HTTP is also appended nowadays with HTTPS. Thus, that yes is nothing but security. Okay. Along with HTTP, there will be a separate certificate uh, associated with HTTP protocol. Hence, it is called as SSL certificate, and we can call the protocol as HTTP. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, we'll see uh, what exactly the HTTP protocol. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we have given the introduction towards what is URL. And if the HTTP protocol want to work, there will be two requirements, basic requirement. One is client program and the other one called as server program. Okay. Sometimes HTTP protocol is also called a stateless protocol. Stateless, stateless protocol. Okay. Why it's called a stateless protocol? An example. Okay. I'll tell you the greater details of it now. I have a machine. Let me call it as Internet Explorer. Uh, I have a machine which is embedded with a browser called as Internet Explorer. I have a Linux operating system that is embedded with Firefox. Okay. I have uh, one more machine. Let me uh, take more precise example that is also associated with some other browser like UC browser. Okay. Each and every machine they are going to fetch the HTTP protocol with their domain names depend upon it. Okay. This never bothers with the other browser. Okay. Uh, it never bothers that the other nearest machine or the other machine is also using HTTP protocol and this machine is using HTTP protocol, it will never bother. The meaning of this is any machine with any browser, it is compatible to use HTTP protocol and it's not going to have a particular state of it. Hence, HTTP is called a stateless protocol. Okay. Hence, HTTP is also called as what? Stateless. We don't have any particular state. This HTTP will work in this you know, domain, this particular operating system, this particular explorer, I mean uh, browser. No, we don't have any consent for that. Hence, HTTP protocol is sometimes called as stateless protocol. Okay. This is just an interaction. HTTP request will always get a uh, response. This is a common interaction between the client and server, which we studied in the uh, first session. The architecture of client server. What the job of the client? Client will send a request. What the job of the server? If the request is a percent which is accessible, he will service back with the help of reply. Okay. So we all know about this, uh, you know, operation. So this it might be Linux, it might be Internet Explorer, or any browser with any operating system. It can able to access the HTTP protocol. Hence, it is called as stateless protocol. Okay. And basically, HTTP we can look up into two important you know, version. One is called as uh, uh, HTTP 1.0. Okay, by default, it's a default version. And the other version, what we have called as HTTP 1.1. Okay, and uh, we can call the default version. I mean, default uh, version of uh, 1.0 is called as non-persistent connection. And default HTTP 1.1 is called as persistent communication or connection. Okay. So, what is the meaning of persistent and non-persistent HTTP? 
okay before studying the detailed aspect of this let me tell you the sequence diagram how exactly this communication can be explained okay that is what the meaning of uh, I, I later you can understand what is the meaning of non persistent communication or connection and persistent connection okay so uh, we'll see that with the help of this diagram you can able to understand okay so I, I I'm using a machine I'm using a machine and I want to fetch the request from the server using a TCP connection okay if uh, before that, I want to tell you one more important definition called as RTT, called as round trip time. You might have been heard of this previously. If not, let me explain. What is the meaning of round trip time? A sender will send a request with the help of client server communication and it will take some time to send the request and the server will process it and he will reply back. Okay. This complete time that uses to send the request process the request and getting the reply back. This time is called as one RTT. Round trip time. This time is called as one complete RTT. Uh, it's called as round trip time. Okay. So now let me explain this RTT uh, scenario also with the help of this HTTP protocol. Now, with the help of TCP connection, with the help of this machine, uh, some uh, desktop machine, the server, uh, uh, the client want to access the data from the server. This is client and this is server. Okay. For example, I type a request. I want to search the photo of Sachin Tendulkar. What I'll do? I'll type Sachin in uh, you know menu box in the Google uh, Google you know, browser. What I'll get? I'll get lot of Sachins. Correct? No. So I'll get lot of Sachin. And at the same time, in the new tab, I want to open one more, you know, one, one more operation I want to do it. Okay. Let me call. I want to go for YouTube channel. What I'll do? www.youtube.com. I'll go for it. Okay. And again, one more tab, I'll use one more operation. Okay. To fetch the data from server, it will take one RTT to operate with one operation. For example, I'll search Sachin Tendulkar image. For example, I'll get the photo of him. I'll call this as one request and one response. This complete time is called as one RTT, or else we can also call it as round, round trip time, round trip time. Okay. For example, there is a scenario. Okay. For each and every request and response, for each and every request and response, I may require equal RTT, I mean to say one RTT for one request and one response. Okay. Such connections are called as, we can call them as persistent communication. For each and every new operation, I require one RTT time. Okay. If you want to search Sachin Tendulkar image, I require one RTT. I want to search, I want to go for YouTube channel, I require one RTT. Okay, so such connections we can call them as persistent RTT, persistent HTTP connection. There are some situations where, with the help of single HTTP connection, I can able to access multiple data. I can able to transmit multiple data. You can see here with one request, I can able to have multiple response. Okay, so this request and response we can call it as non-persistent connection, non-persistent connection. Or communication. I hope you got with single request. I'm getting lot of replays. Or I'm getting lot of you know. I can do lot of operation with the help of only one connection of HTTP, and hence it is called as non-persistent communication. I hope you got the logic of this. The behavior of HTTP protocol. A persistent communication is a type of version of HTTP protocol wherein which for each and every request and response, I mean to call one RTT is required for fetching one object. But in case of non-persistent communication, with a single request, I can able to fetch many uh, objects, hence it is called as non-persistent communication. Okay. By this discussion, we can around say check the comparison between non-persistent communication and persistent communication. Okay. You can check out here. You can check out here. Okay. For non-persistent communication, how many RTTs are required? I require two RTTs to fetch each object. Okay, I require two RTTs at least to the, fetch each object. But in case of persisting, we require very few RTTs and we can have the operation very fast. 
that is a major difference between non persistent and persistent communication okay persistent communication uses a default version as 1.1 non persistent communication uses a default version as 1.0 okay but non persistent communication uses at least two rtts to fetch each object two rtts to fetch each object okay but in case of persistent uh, it's not compulsory very few rtts are required to fetch the object okay so hence it causes less slow start in case of persistent and hence we can have most uh, slow start we have time in case of non persistent connection okay uh, these are the major differences what we can have in case of non persistent communication and persistent communication okay so you can alarm say imagine with the help of uh, uh, this diagram non persistent will be like this and persistent will be like this okay so uh, what we can have oh, sorry this is non persistent and this is persistent for persistent we require less rtts but for non persistent we require, we require more rtts you can check out for each and every request and response we require two rtts and for the uh, for many objects we can able to download or see the data with the help of lesser rtts okay so that is what we can have uh, in this example okay there is a scenario uh, out of this which is better obviously persistent communication is better which is having a default version as 1.1 why it will take less time it will take less time obviously the efficiency will be high obviously the efficiency will be high and especially nowadays we people all depend upon efficiency correct so we want to get the uh, fetch the data or download the data or download the objects with lesser time okay so persistent communication with fewer entities with fewer slow slow start operation is the best uh, http compared to the other one called as non persistent http non persistent http protocol okay so let me see the http message format basically http consists of two important message format one is request message format and other one called as response message format request message format will be taken care by client and response message format will be deal by server okay request message format consists of these things one is called as request line and the first line is called as request line and the rest of the lines we can call them as header lines okay one is request message format and other one called as response message format okay each and every request message format uh, we will we'll see the format of uh, http protocol now in case of request message format we have two important uh, things one is request line and one is header lines okay what is a request line whenever the client start sending the request it will use a method called get method we have various method get method put method post method and all out of that the request message will always use get method okay following by to where you are going to fetch the data to where i mean to say the particular uh, you know whether you are fetching the path or you are just going for the host that will be the second part followed by the protocol followed by the version i think we all know 1.1 stand for non persistent communication and header lines consists of host what the host you are searching for that connection whether it's open or closed obviously it's, it's closed when it want to perform perfectly user agent whether it's which browser and what the version and accept language and what type of language it's going to accept all those things we have in the header lines okay so this is a request message format we'll see the request line mainly consists of three fields which are those method field url field and http version field you can check out here method field the methods the different methods get method put method post method and uh, http version field and the host field okay url field okay the method field can be of get method post method head method and all other methods okay so get method will be always used to fetch the uh, send the request and delete method to close and post head and put method will be commonly used by the response message format okay
Okay. Along with that, along with this, uh, we also have a response message format, and we'll see how response message format works and request message format also works now. Okay. So now let me go with the header format of HTTP request message. Uh, similarly, the same message format we are putting in the header format. That's all. The first line is called as a request line. Next, followed by header lines, followed by the message, the uh, the request which you want to send. As usual, method we have, URL we have, version we have, and they are followed by the spaces. They are embedded with the help of spaces. Carriage written and left factoring we have, we can have. I mean to say, it has to go for next line. Okay, so next line consists of the respect to header lines. Okay, followed by again carriage written with left factoring, followed by the body of the request which you want to send. Uh, this is uh, this is all about the request message format or uh, what you can able to have in this lecture and I think in this lecture we have uh, a revision uh, I mean whatever the uh, takeaway from the first session we saw all those things followed by the first important protocol of application they are called as HTTP protocol and along with the HTTP protocol we saw the versions of HTTP protocol we have two important versions one is HTTP 1.0 and HTTP 1.1 HTTP 1.0 is also called as persistent and HTTP 1.1 is also called as non-persistent communication why persistent communication and why non-persistent with the help of RTT uh, we saw all those things and HTTP consists of two important message formats one is request message format and response message format out of those two message formats we saw request message format in this lecture okay basically request message format consists of two things one is request line followed by the header lines request line we have method field url field and http version field and response uh, within the method field we have we can have get method post method and head method okay so along with all these uh, ingredients of request message format if you want to learn http protocol we have to know about the important things what is url web browser and web server Okay, web browser is nothing but the client who uses the web browser, and uh, web server is nothing but the server who responds back. Okay, and URL, what is URL? It consists of mainly four parts. I think we discussed that also. URL consists of mainly four parts, uh, which are those: the scheme, the host, path, and query stream. Okay, so this is what about uh, this lecture, and uh, we'll go with the. Uh, the next word, next, uh, you know, head of mind of HTTP protocol and other features of HTTP protocol, how HTTP protocol can be improved with the help of web caching and other features, we'll see in the next lecture. Thank you so much for your patience listening. Thank you. If you have any questions at any point of time, please contact me with the mail ID which I had given. Thank you so much.